brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who give you the widest choice of cereals in the whole wide world. All the great grains in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, back from her European vacation, our popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Great pleasure tonight to present a new guest panelist I'm sure you're going to like very much. He's a brilliant young actor who does a wonderful job in the new picture, Teacher's Pet, Gig Young. And on my left, a very old and dear friend, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman whose column in this week magazine is admired by millions, nonetheless most admired by me, Mr. Bennett, sir. And on my left, of course, our moderator and perpetual inspiration, Big Daddy O, John Charles <laughs> Day. <laughs> I don't know, when I get a haircut, it doesn't cause half the commotion that Arlene's haircuts do. I can't figure it out. Well, panel, I feel good tonight. I got my mail all read, having been back a week, and I must say a lot of the letters said how nice it was to see uh, Mr. Fadiman here in this chair and to have a chance to visit with him again. Went to a wedding this afternoon, so I'm going to be kind and easy with you. One of the boys in our newsroom on that other network, Ed Gazzarelli and... Miss Elaine Carlson get married, and we just had a reception tonight, so I'll be gentle with you. But we'll also have some troubles for you, and we'll have a mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger after this panel, just to start things off with sweetness and light, a double package. Will our first challengers come in and sign in, please? <clears throat> Esteline, Esteline Ann. James Ball. That's Esteline Ann and James Ball. It isn't, we're not tight with the chalk. I just thought you might like to get rid of it. Would you tell us, is it a Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Ball, yeah. and you are Mr. Ball, yeah, right. son? son? Fine. Well, Mrs. Ball and son, would you meet the panel? How do and you do? panel, mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Ball and Mr. Ball's son. And where are you from? Texas. From Texas? Well, fine. Come on over and join me over here. We'll have to tell This isn't as big as Texas here, but if the three of us try hard, we can all squeeze in. Right. And now tell me, uh, Mrs. <clears throat> Ball and Mr. Ball, do you know how we keep score? I believe so. All right, fine. Then let's let the folks at home and those who've joined us here in the theater know exactly what your line is. Okay. All right. <laughs> Panel, we will tell you that uh, Mrs. Ball and her son James are salaried. And uh, let's begin the general questioning with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Ball, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. yes. Do you and your son participate in the same type of work? Yes. Uh, is it a type of service? Yes. Uh, could anyone on this panel enjoy your services? Yes. Both men and women? Yes. Uh, do you work in the daytime rather than at night? Um. I mean, to the exclusion of night, Dorothy? No, not I, to the I think the question is causing some confusion. Uh, do, do you do more work in the daytime than you do at night? Do you work more hours in the day than, let's well, say, after no. 6 o'clock at night? No. No. That would no. be one down and nine to go, Mr. Young. 
You do not work more hours at night than in the daytime. No, the question was, do you work more hours in the daytime than at night? I the see, answer see, was I no to my that. first time out. Um, <laughs> uh, are your services enjoyable? Yes. They are enjoyable. Yes, I would think that the, the hope of uh, Mrs. Ball and her son is that the service is received by those who are on the receiving end would be enjoyable, yes. Yes. Um, uh, would we come to you for the services, or would you come to us? Well, that has, can't be answered yes or no, Gig. You want to ask, leave it at the first half? Yes. <laughs> yes. We, yes, the first half. What the first half? We well, come go to ahead, you uh, Arlene. Take it over. You pass? I pass, huh? You're so attractive, it doesn't matter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> been pal I can feel a heart beating from here. <laughs> no, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely spoken, Mr. Young. Is this, uh, whatever you do, you say it is enjoyable, would it be in the class of people coming to you for a quality of entertainment of some kind? Yes. Yes. Uh, more than three or five people might come at once to enjoy your performance, whatever it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you perform together in this that you do? No. That makes it two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever done the work, Mrs. Estheline Ball? Have you ever done the work that you do in either a circus, sideshow, or carnival? Yes. Would it be some kind of uh, exhibition that requires physical dexterity? No. Uh, small conference. Wow. <laughs> Fall back. Fall back and regroup. You all go ahead and tell each other about Dorothy's trip to Europe. <laughs> Dorothy, you saw my fair lady in London, didn't you? How was it? No. <laughs> I bet it's unawkwardly it's fun. Too. Have you come to a conclusion? We've come to a conclusion. I think that it, this is a marginal area, but we will admit that uh, if it were done properly, or properly rather, that there is a measure of dexterity required. Yes. When, and you, when, you, when, when either of you do not do this work together, I understand. No. That question was asked. Yes. No, they do but not. But is it the same kind of work that you do? Yes. It yes. is. Does this, uh, does this act that you perform, which I presume it must be, uh, require the use of any kind of animal? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Ball, in your work, as divorced from your son's work, uh, do you ever stand in one place and have people look at you? <clears throat> this calls for a conference, maybe. Oh, we'll have another oh, conference. you just like it. <laughs> you get to Switzerland now, Dorothy. Everything will be all right in a bit. But, I mean, how do you ask somebody if it's... You get a yes, Dorothy. Yes. You sometimes stand still, mm -hmm. and people just come and look at you. Mm -hmm. uh, does the same apply in perhaps a different way to your son? Do people just stand and look at him sometimes, too? I yes. would. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there something about you that we can't see now or that you're not doing now that would make you an attraction at a carnival? Yes. I say so, yes. I hope so. Um, She's not bearded, that's for sure. No. <laughs> she doesn't look very tattooed. No. <laughs> would you be in the sideshow part of a carnival? Yes. Yes, well... Uh, can either one of you either uh, swallow anything unusual or tie yourself into knots? Yes, I think so. One of those, huh? Want to see me pick the wrong one, Dick? <laughs> Would you? No, yeah, you've got it. Uh, does either one of you swallow swords or fire? Properly, I hope. Swords or fire. Now, you want to go on from there? Well, I might as well. Um, all right. Fire. 
Fire that. No. The girl. <laughs> Water out of six to go. I know we'd make it. <laughs> Dig? I beg your pardon? It's your turn. I just got a note. I thought we had it. No, I got <laughs> it. has to be swords. It has to be swords. You're right, Dig Young. Very good. Actually, thank you both very much. I Won't think they do it for us now? No, I'm afraid we don't have all the swords but Do here. they both do it at different times? <laughs> and different places. Oh. Yes. Did, 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 thank did, you very much. Thank did, you. Did, did, did Mrs. Ball teach us, son? Thank you very much. a tough one and a very good beginning, panel. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please, sir? Thank you. Just sign right there. Right on. Arthur? Too easy. He's obviously a barber. Slim? Vaughn? Right there? Mr. Vaughan, where are you from? Sunland to Hunger, California, in the Green Verduga Hills. Sunland to Hunger, California, in the Green Verduga Hills. The most beautiful right. place in the world. The most beautiful place. It must be. It is. You'd remember that long name. Well, Mr. Vaughan, will you meet the panel? Panel, Mr. Vaughan, will you join me over here, please, sir? Do you know how we keep score, Mr. Vaughan? Yes, I Fine. Yes, sir. Then let's let the folks at home, those here in the theater, except the panel, know exactly what your line is. Well, Mr. Bourne is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Miss Arlene Francis. All that hirsute appendage is very attractive, Mr. Vaughan. That's for openers. It becomes you very well. Thank you. Tell Miss Arlene about her new hair comb. That's what you're supposed to do now. Oh, it's very nice. Is it, Mr. Vaughan? I like the way you have yours done, too. <laughs> well, it isn't done. It's natural. It just... <laughs> Mr. Vaughan, you have a crazy advantage over me. <laughs> well, I'm the a secret to it. I eat catalogs every morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Vaughan, do people come to you for your services? Yes, they do. Do you travel at all in your work? Uh, in a short distance, yes. Don't, don't give any more information than you have to. Just, Mr. Vaughan does travel, yes. Travel, yes. Are people benefited by your services? Yes, they are. No, so that you won't be misled. Here again, we come to the area of gratification with a service because it's well done, mm -hmm. right? All right. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Self-employed. Oh, self-employed, I'm sorry. Uh... Would I be correct in assuming that there is no product connected with what you do? No. There is no product? No product. Uh, do you in some way advise people that you talk to? Yes. Uh, do you deal mostly with adults? Yes. Uh, is there anything associated with the ministry in any way with what you do? No. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Vaughan, uh, does that beautiful set of whiskers play any part whatever in either the work you do or in attracting patronage to your particular line of endeavor? No. You small, mean you wait a minute, we have a small conference, please. <clears throat> I think on that basis, Mr. Vaughan might agree with me that uh, perhaps we would say that to some degree there is an affirmative reply required by your previous question. In other words, the, the, the beard might either inspire confidence 
or uh, lead people to be more better customers, more apt to come. There is an area yeah, in there, yes. Lot. Mr. Vaughan, do you have anything to do with people's health? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Vaughan, if I lived in California, could I take advantage of your services? If Miss Kilgallen lived in California, could she take advantage of your services? Yes. Do you think I'd be a likely customer? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Yes. You said yes. Um, would I? Well, I just have to rule something out. <coughs> would I be conscious at all times? Uh, <laughs> there are a great many wow. questions that we feel equipped to answer here, Dorothy. But you must. <laughs> well, let me put it this way: Are most of your clients conscious at all times while <laughs> receiving your services? While what? Dear? While receiving your services. Are they conscious at all times while receiving? I think yes. We'd say yeah. they're conscious. Yeah. I was only trying to rule out that he was a hypnotist. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you talk to these people? No. Well, then how do you advise them? <laughs> Actually, there is an element of conversation, as there probably would be in any um, conveyance of service. Uh -huh. Is there anything physical in your work? I mean, beyond the ordinary pencil and paper work that would be involved. I mean, does it require physical activity above and beyond the norms expected of somebody who's a clerk in an office? Yes, beyond a desk job. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you perform out of doors at any time? Outdoors, yes. yes. This may have nothing to do with your profession, but are you wearing cowboy boots? Are you wearing cowboy boots? Yes, ma'am. Uh, may I assume that, that, that you could perform your services without wearing cowboy boots? Oh, you could do it barefooted. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, are there many people in the United States doing what you do? Yes. It's a perfectly ordinary occupation for people who don't have beards and long hair. Yes. Does it have anything to do with the land or animals? With the land or animals? Mm, no. Good no. work. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Young. It's yours. Well, I think he's an outdoor chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, you touch the people. Did you say you didn't touch the people? I don't. Or not necessarily so. The you question hasn't that. been raised. It hasn't? Then I shall ask it. Do you touch the people who receive your service? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. I'm going to give you one minute more because you don't when you are started. When you are carrying on the service that you do, do you need some equipment of some kind? Yes, I do. Uh, do you divine something from uh, water or ground? or air, sky. or sky, uh, in your service? Do you, do you, what was the Does he divine, does he discover something? Is he uh, called in to find out about something regarding? Oh, yes, I yeah. see what you mean. I mean You're you gonna give like me a no fact? Finding water, that's right, five down and five to go, that's right. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Are the people that you serve any better looking or cleaner or uh, better off after you have manipulated them. Ten down and no more to go. <laughs> You're not even close, so I'm going to throw all the cards in, if I may. Mr. Vaughan is a tree surgeon. Mr. Vaughan has his own company, the All-American Tree Surgeon and Landscaping Company, and we answered your question affirmatively, Bennett, because Mr. Vaughan's beard and long hair, uh, worn, his hair worn long, is his trademark, so that everybody knows him particularly for that. Mr. Vaughan... Yes. Also, he could you... suffer from Japanese beetle with a thing Mr. like that. <laughs> Mr. Vaughan... Well, I spray it every once in a while. <laughs>
Mr. Vaughan, you, mu you must know that joke about the tree surgeon who fell out of his patient, don't you? Oh, I lost a lot of patients. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vaughan, thank you very much for being a guest. Thank that you. Stuck the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our alternate sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenge, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with uh, Bennett Sir. Well, that was quite an ovation. Uh, would the term television personality apply to you? That's right. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Uh, do you sing? Yes. Mr. Young? Uh, are you, does your uh, program uh, come from the uh, West Coast? Usually? Mm-hmm. Miss Fancy? Well, I didn't get the answer. Yes. Is your program on every day? No, ma'am. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, does your name sometimes get linked with one particular state? State, one particular state? Yes. Uh, yes. Miss Kilgallen? I don't know if I know what Ben is thinking of. Um, do you have a mustache? <laughs> yes. Mr. Young? Would, would you be uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford? The best I could do, John. <laughs> <laughs> you did. the best. You did beautifully. I think what did it's when I said yes, ma'am. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that may have tipped a bit against us, though. But if Bennett got off on that state, I was hoping we could trip him some way. But I couldn't think of any way to trip him up. No, he. Uh, that, that, that did it. There's nothing like knowing who's in town. <laughs> uh, wish we had 16 tons of something or the other to drop on them about now. <laughs> Sixteen tons was your biggest record. Is there record, any other personality yes. that has a state uh, associated with his name but you, Tennessee? Tennessee Williams. Tennessee well, Williams. Well, no, yes. I, I get mean. a lot of his mail, and you ought to read some of it. <laughs> 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 no, that's good. There's main chance farms, of course, <laughs> but that's a different thing. Well, I don't know what brought you east, but I might say... Uh, right out here in front of everybody, you were at our Overseas Press Club annual dinner, and it was real nice of you to come east and be one of our guests that Thank night. you, John. I enjoyed that. Uh, I'm here to do two of our shows here and give us all a shot in the arm to get in the new studio, and we're on the other network. Which one? Uh... NBC. <laughs> <laughs> NBC, did yes. you say? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know that you are on NBC and have been there for some time. And uh, I don't think we better hide the fact. Well, thank you, John, very much. This is fun. I've enjoyed watching this. Of course, we watch it at home every week, too. And to be here and see everybody, it's real fun. Yeah, they're real live and sometimes nasty. Right now, I think they're nasty, because I figured <laughs> we ought to have you here with us for some time. Tennessee, thank you a lot for coming. Next time, I don't know what, maybe we'll grow you a long beard and some long hair, and I'll answer for you, and we'll be here all night. Thank you, John. Okay, thank you. <laughs> word from our sponsor.
I happy thought it's nice to have all the family back together again, Miss Dorothy. This is John Daly saying good night until next week. Good night, and Gig, nice to have you. Please come again. Thank you, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. And give my love to your pretty wife, Elizabeth. I yes? will, thank you. And the rest of it, I'll speak to you later. All good right. night, Bennett. <laughs> we saw some more states. Texas, Guinan, Bull, Montana, and good Washington night. Irving. Good night, John. Good night, Bennett. <laughs> Bennett, thanks for being with us on What's My Life? If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines.